Hello students, welcome to Bio Smart Academy. In today's lecture, we will going to start our new lecture series on enzyme. In this whole lecture series, we complete the total enzyme that is very very important for CSI, NET, GATE, DBT, ICMR and all other entrance examination as well as for your BSc and MSc. Okay, so this is a very important uh, lecture series. I hope that you liked the total lecture series. I will upload video every day okay and if you like the lectures please share and subscribe please subscribe because I upload all the lectures and all these lectures are free of cost okay so I just need one subscription from you all okay so please subscribe so let's start the lecture series of enzymes okay that is the lecture one so what we will going to study in this lecture so this lecture will be of basic introduction okay so in this lecture first of all we should define enzyme in a very proper manner then we will see some of the important properties of enzyme that make the enzyme unique okay thirdly we will deal with some of the important terms that is related to enzymes for example coenzyme co-substrate cofactor all this so this will be our first lecture that is basic introduction okay so Please student, if you like the lecture, please subscribe because your subscription, your share make us motivate, make me motivate to make more and more free lectures. Okay. And I will make free lectures for you all for your CSR net preparation so that you qualify CSR. And if you see our previous lecture that already uploaded on biochemistry, cell biology, all that lectures are basically with good content. I thought that because I received many good comments. Okay. So please watch all that lectures and please subscribe. Okay. So let's start the lecture one of enzyme that is basic introduction. So first of all, we should know that what is enzyme. Okay. We should define the term enzyme. So enzyme so first of all enzyme is basically a biocatalyst remember this point it is a biocatalyst and another one thing that please note down all the things that i discuss here okay enzyme is a biocatalyst biocatalyst means what the function of catalyst that we used to read in chemistry is that it increases the rate of chemical reaction okay it increases the rate of chemical reaction so this is the function of catalyst okay for example nickel we used to read in inorganic chemistry okay and uh, bio means what it is related to somewhat biological sciences Bi biological sciences or the product of biological sciences okay so basically an enzyme is a biocatalyst it means that it increases the rate of chemical reaction okay so it increases the rate of chemical reaction without itself change. So it increases the rate of chemical reaction without itself changed. Without itself changed in the overall process. Okay. So the proper definition of enzyme is that enzyme is a biocatalyst that increases the rate of chemical reaction, but it not change itself without itself being changed in the overall process okay so this is the definition of enzyme i hope you understand this okay now so now we are going to uh, discuss some of the important properties of enzyme okay so before i discuss the important properties of enzyme i just want to uh, i want to just uh, give you example suppose a reaction is takes place suppose a is converted into b a is converted into B and suppose suppose the time take is about 10 minutes okay and in this case enzyme is not present I just cut it down that enzyme is not present clear so when a when a substrate that is A is converted into product that is B the time is taken is about 10 minutes and here enzyme is not present similarly if the same reaction is takes place that is A is converted into B in presence of enzyme then it may be take one minute and here enzyme is present okay so what does it mean it means that the rate of reaction 
that is the time that taken to convert A to B it earlier it take 10 10 minutes but now it takes only one minute it means what the rate of reaction is increased when the enzyme is present clear so this is enzyme it increases the rate of reaction without itself changed okay now next clear next so now we were going to discuss some important properties of enzyme okay so the first important properties is that many students thought that all basically enzymes are protein but no that is not the case most of the enzymes are proteins but not all okay so what is the exception this is the exception of some of the catalytic rna molecule some of the catalytic okay some of the catalytic rna molecule okay for example for example ribozyme ribozyme okay so what is this ribozyme this ribozyme is an rna enzyme rna molecule or you can say rna enzyme okay so this is not a pro uh, basically protein okay but this is an enzyme that is rna molecule or rna enzyme okay i will teach you ribosome in details in our upcoming lectures okay so this is the ex exception so here uh, we can say that most of the enzymes are protein but not all okay secondly second important point regarding enzyme so this is the first important point now second important point regarding enzyme is that enzyme is highly specific in nature okay we will see that that why enzyme is highly specific and how it becomes specific in nature okay so just note it down for now that it is very really specific in nature enzyme is highly specific in nature specific in nature okay clear now third important point is that third important point is that enzyme do not change the equilibrium state enzyme note it down enzyme do not change the equilibrium state of a reaction equilibrium state of a reaction equilibrium state of a reaction so what does this means what does this means this means that enzyme do not disturb equilibrium okay so equilibrium means what equilibrium means k equilibrium that is if we write the formula that is del g equals to minus 2.2 303 RT okay log of K equilibrium so this K equilibrium so this K equilibrium is remain undisturbed that is enzyme do not disturb the equilibrium state of the reaction that is this K equilibrium is remain undisturbed okay so that is del G equals to minus 2.303 RT log of K equilibrium clear now so why so the question is that why not change the equilibrium state of the reaction so the answer is that note it down it means that if a reaction favored in forward direction it will remain favored in forward wh whether enzyme is present or not okay so if a reaction is favored in forward direction okay suppose suppose if this is a reaction that is a is converted into b so this is a forward basically reaction and backward is very less okay so if a uh, and it basically if we consider 10 and if this product if consider 100 so here the k equilibrium is what that is product by substrate that is 100 by 10 that is 10 so this is in presence of en enzyme this is in presence of enzyme okay so if a reaction is is a forward direction it will remain in forward direction whether enzyme is present or absent it means what so this is a presence of enzyme this is basically a forward direction now if uh, and and this is a case where enzyme is absent here enzyme is absent enzyme absent clear now if we put the same reaction 
if we give the same reaction in presence of enzyme and if we basically increase the rate of reaction okay if we increase the rate of reaction uh, you can say at least for uh, thousand times then what it becomes that is thousand times then the thousand times that is k then k equilibrium is become uh, it 10 so thousand times means three zero and uh, sorry that is the product thousand times so two zero and thousand times and it is basically 10 so we increase thousand times thousand times so in this case three cut 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 so this is become 10 again so here in the presence of enzyme enzyme present enzyme present here enzyme is present but in the earlier case enzyme is absent okay so in this case enzyme is absent but it does not disturb the equilibrium state okay equilibrium is remain 10 and when we put the enzyme the rate of reaction become increased thousand times rate of reaction basically increased thousand times okay that is basically increased thousand times if an enzyme involved it increases the rate of reaction by thousand fold or thousand times then here it become what remains same that is del g remains same del g not changed clear so this is the point that enzyme accelerate the forward and backward re reaction reaction to the same extent it does not disturb the del, uh, del g or you can say it does not disturb the k equilibrium okay so this is a concept okay now so i hope you get all the important points another important point is that enzyme increase the rate of reaction but how but how it increase the rate of reaction by lowering the activation energy so enzyme increase the rate of reaction rate of reaction but how? By lowering the activation energy. Lowering the activation energy. Clear? So this is a concept. I hope students, you get all the things. Okay. And I will discuss all this point in de details in our upcoming lectures. Okay. Now, now we have to see uh, the general classification of enzyme. Okay, so if we take an enzyme, a protein SS enzyme, and we try to classify it, then it can be classified into two types. One is simple enzyme, one is simple enzyme, and one is conjugated enzyme. Clear? So what does uh, basically simple and conjugated means? So simple enzyme means only the amino acids are present that is a pure enzyme or, or you can say pure protein but here the term conjugate it means some non-protein part will be there with protein part that is protein plus some non-protein part non-protein part so this is a conjugated enzyme okay so our main target is to read the conjugated enzymes Okay, because this is very important. Because for a functional enzyme, non-protein part is very important. So now, let's discuss conjugated enzyme in details. So, conjugated, conjugated, conjugated enzymes. Okay. So, what are these conjugated enzymes? It means, firstly, we see that protein... plus non-protein so protein plus non-protein makes the conjugated enzyme okay clear and the non-protein component here here the non-protein component is known as or you can say is called cofactor note down cofactor so now i hope that you understand cofactor non-protein component this cofactor and this cofactor is required for catalytic activity for catalytic activity 
okay see here i hope that you get my points clear so this cofactor is required for the catalytic activity okay now what happens if we remove this cofactor what happens if we remove this cofactor if we remove this cofactor then what will happen so if we remove this cofactor from a conjugated enzyme then the then what happens then only this protein part will remain then only the protein part will remain and in that condition the enzyme is called apo enzyme apo enzyme clear so if we remove the cofactor so only the protein part is remain that is we remove the non protein part and on that situation or uh, in this type of situation we call that type of protein or conjugated enzyme is apo enzyme clear now so this is apo enzyme and this apo enzyme is biologically inactive biologically inactive okay so i hope students till now you got a clear idea if you have any doubt comment me okay now so this total part that is a protein plus non protein that is a cofactor if we combine this total part this total part is called hollow enzyme what hollow enzyme hollow enzyme and what is this hollow enzyme this hollow enzyme is biologically active biologically active clear so protein plus non protein that is the cofactor is known as hollow enzyme and it is biologically active and if we remove this cofactor that is non protein part only the protein part is remain then we call it as apo enzyme and and it is biologically inactive so i hope that you understand these things so if you have any doubt then please comment now next now so this cofactor this cofactors now if we discuss about this cofactors this cofactors can be a metal ion can be a metal ion can be a metal ion for example uh, copper for example magnesium for example manganese okay i will discuss all this and this cofactor can be a organic can be a organic component or can be a organic compounds can be organic compounds for example vitamins okay so it can be metal ion it can be organic compounds okay now so the cofactors that are basically organic compounds we call that type of cofactors are coenzymes coenzymes clear so i hope now you get the idea of coenzyme okay now so this cofactor can be linked to protein can be linked to protein can be linked to protein either through covalent or through non covalent interaction okay either through covalent or non covalent interaction okay so when when coenzymes or cofactors are tightly associated okay just note it down so when okay so when coenzymes if we take it is tightly associated it is tightly associated tightly associated with protein with protein okay when it is tightly associated with protein either through uh, you can say covalent or non covalent interaction when coenzymes are tightly associated with the protein covalently or non covalently then we call we call that type of coenzymes we call prosthetic group prosthetic group so students i hope that now you understand the concept of prosthetic group prosthetic group is always tightly associated with protein either through covalent or non covalent interaction okay now if 
कोफैक्टर्स और सिंपल मेटल आयंस और एनी अदर कोफैक्टर्स और कॉम्प्लेक्स कंपाउंड और ऑर्गेनिक कंपाउंड्स ओके यू कैन से एनीथिंग ट्रांसजेनली एसोसिएटेड ओके सो वैन जस्ट राइट डाउन वैन को एंजाइम्स आर ट्रांसजेनली एसोसिएटेड ट्रांसजेंटली मीन्स लूजली एसोसिएटेड विथ प्रोटीन्स विथ प्रोटीन्स वी कॉल वी कॉल्ड सो वैन इट इज ट्रांस एसोसिएटेड विथ ए गिवेन एंजाइम और प्रोटीन मॉलिक्यूल वी कॉल इट एज को सबस्ट्रेट को सबस्ट्रेट को सबस्ट्रेट Now, students, I hope that you understand the concept of co-substrate. So, co-substrate is transiently or loosely associated with enzymes. So, that is co-substrate. And when the coenzymes are tightly associated with the protein or enzyme, we call it prosthetic group. So, I hope students you understand all the things, all the concept very nicely. If you still have any doubt, comment me on the comment box. So, with this note, I end the lecture one of our enzyme lecture series. Okay if you like this lecture please share and subscribe it motivate us to make more and more free lectures okay and i will make more and more lectures i will try to cover the total syllabus of csnet so we will meet in our next lecture of enzyme lecture series till then thank you